Hello, I'm Gary Ray Smith, The Knitting Man. Welcome to my first episode of, for my YouTube channel. This episode is called How I Learnt to Knit. Hello. Um, so first of all, I want to say why I started my channel. Um, at the tail end of last year, I put out my first um, pattern, my first chart. Uh, it was uh, in the autumn of last year. And um, it was for, uh, on Instagram, I, I'd been knitting this, which is a blanket for my granddaughter Doris and people were asking if they could have that pattern and I'd not is issued a pattern before so I I decided how how would I like it and um, so this is what I produced so I got some posters printed a limited edition of 50 posters printed of that chart um, and they all sold out very quickly and uh, so quickly in fact that we thought well what do we do now so we we ran out of posters and we um put it on ravelry and then it sold and it sold consistently since on ravelry so as soon as the uh, pattern came out people were buying it to put on their wall because because people were saying to me um i can't i can't i'll never be able to knit like that that's above my standard of knitting um but i'll buy it as a as as a signed print to put on my wall and and i thought to myself well no you can knit like that if you can knit i can teach you to knit this it's just they're just stitches so that's the reason that i decided to start this youtube channel um so then I've gone back to my uh, Instagram followers and I've asked them what they'd like to see. So the main thing that people have come back with is that they would like to see how I carry floats across. So that's the front of anything. And that is the back. So people have asked me People think it's tidy. It doesn't look tidy to me. It's just my knitting. But that's the back. So it looks like there aren't any floats. And I, I say it's a no float method. But really, there are floats. They're just one stitch long. So people have asked if they can uh, see how I do that. So later on in this episode, I've got a little clip that we filmed in the car earlier while we were waiting for my grandson Arthur to do his tennis lesson. Um, and in that clip, I explained to you how to do that. The other things that my Instagram followers have asked to see is where I knit. And I, um, I knit every day, like most of you, I suppose. Um, I take my knitting with me wherever I go. Um, I know there's a worldwide knitting public day, but every day to me is a worldwide knitting public day. And I live in a beautiful part of the country. So for those of you that don't know, I live in Cornwall, which is the bottom left hand corner of the country. So there's sea above us, there's sea below us. And if you go west, you end up in America. If you go east, that's the rest of England. So I'm going to be taking you out and about on my travels around Cornwall, uh, just my daily knitting. So and um, we've actually got in this episode, we've got some shots that we took earlier this week of St. Michael's Mount, uh, Marazion 
it's called and um, and you'll be able to see those later on in this episode um, and this episode is called how I learned to knit so later on in this episode I will be talking about how I learned to knit and I'll probably just leave the camera running for that part so I will be rambling on as my wife likes to say I can talk about knitting all day long my wife by the way is called the knitting widow because she is a widow to knitting um, people often ask me does your wife knit and the answer is she can but she's not really bothered um, and that, that's so that's what we're going to be looking at in this episode uh, and in future episodes uh, there's there's a number of things that I've got lined up that I want to talk to you about there's there's going to be more how to's um, I'd like to talk about my stash really because um, I'm sable um, a lot of you will know what sable means but um, sable stands for the S stands for stash the A for acquisition and then it's beyond life expectancy. I've been sable now for about 20 years. <laughs> That's my wife in the background. She's laughing as well. Um, so I would like to talk about my stash. I'd actually like to get my stash back together again. They've been apart for a long time. You know, they, I'd really like to get them all in one place. But that's something maybe we'll be talking about. Um, in the next episode, I'll definitely be talking about steaking because on my current project, which is Death's Head Moths, um, which is that trying to get it into the light so you can see uh, I'm going to cut the steak open down there going to cut the steak open down there and open it out into a blanket so that that's going, probably going to happen tomorrow um, so uh, that will be in my next episode something else that's uh, coming up in future episodes is I think I'm going to go through uh, all of my baby blanket designs from Arthur's Blanket which is um, it's now called Labour of Love Blanket because people kept saying to me I don't want a blanket with the name Arthur in I don't know an Arthur well it's now called Labour of Love and you get an alphabet with it so you can write the name of the person you love in it. So that's Arthur's Blanket there or Labour of Love Blanket. So uh, that chart is available from my Etsy shop. Um, and I'll be talking about um, design process as well. So for instance, um how i go from a drawing a rough drawing uh this actually started as drawing about that big in my sketchbook and then it became like an a4 drawing and then a full size drawing um after which it became a chart again only available at the moment so this is a limited edition chart again there's only 50 of these available from my Etsy shop and um, through to a knitted blanket so we'll be talking about baby blankets um, and design process and the other thing that I do apart from charting patterns is I knit completely off piste so I just start rolling and see where it goes and they're usually fair old patterns so that would have been knitted with no pattern and I just make it up as I go along I've got another one here So I don't chart it at all. 
I just see where the mood takes me and where the colours take me. And this also, this was knitted um, in one piece. And so it, there, was, there was no sewing up, it was knitted in the round and it was knitted in one piece and then these uh, shoulder seams were just knitted together at the end. So there was no sewing up at all in that. Thank you. So now I've got a, a little clip of me at St Michael's Mount the other day having a cheeky little knit and then uh, we'll come back here and uh, I'll tell you about how I started knitting. So that was a quite a chilly day in Cornwall there and there were some swimmers. I don't know if you can make them out. Mrs Smith zoomed in on them, but it is her first time using a video camera. First time ever. Um, and it's our first time doing any sort of filming. So um, I, I hope it's up to sort of some kind of minimum standard, but we'll see. Please, please let me know in the comments below what you think. So I live in Cornwall, as I said before, there's my Cornwall mug, I've got my coffee in there, have a slurp. And um, that's actually Cornish ware, for those of you that don't know. Um, and Cornwall's famous for Pole Dark, if you've seen that on the TV, or Daphne du Maurier, if you've seen things like Jamaica Inn, Frenchman's Creek, uh, they're all based in Cornwall. And also there's a big... A uh, group of artists in Cornwall, uh, specifically in St Ives, and I live just a few miles down the road from St Ives. So how I learnt to knit. So I was taught to knit by my nan and my mum when I was quite a small child. So small in fact that I don't actually remember learning to knit. But I do remember being young and knitting small things like I would knit scarves for teddies, that sort of thing. So I could knit. I knew how to knit. But I didn't really start knitting again until I was 16. And I saw an article, I think it was an Observer magazine, and it was about the uh, British actor Terence Stamp. And he was talking about a gentleman's wardrobe. And as part, there was a photograph of him in a, a fair role. Um, so a, as part of a gentleman's wardrobe, he was saying a gentleman should have a fair role jumper. And he, he was in a quite traditional uh, fair role vest, I think, in the photograph. But it's a 1981 article, if anyone wants to go looking for it and I'm 16 at the time and I've just started art school and I decided in the first term to specialise in fashion and textiles so uh, for that year I was learning to pattern cut and um, and knitting really wasn't on the curriculum but I, I had an interest in knitting at the age of 16 um, so but, but where it all started for me is uh, two years later, 18, um, I'm, I go to London to, to start studying. 
um, and I'm studying fine art now at Chelsea, Chelsea School of Art. And I'm in the art student halls, which the art student halls for the, all of the art colleges in London. So um, with me in those halls are lots of people from Central St. Martins that are studying fashion. So there are people and they're hand knitting and they're around me and I'm thinking, well, I know how to knit. And I start to do a bit of knitting then. And at that time, I suppose I was already exposed to the knitting of Patricia Roberts. Um, I think she had a shop, if memory serves me right, it would have been around Covent Garden somewhere uh, at that time. And I'd go in there and it was just oh, fantastic. So, um, but the real catalyst for me uh, was seeing the work of Martin Kidman. So, so Martin Kidman at the time was doing uh, jumpers for Joseph. Uh, he was all over the magazines and I, I worked at work. I studied and I lived just down the road to Sloan Street where Joseph would have Martin Kidman jumpers in the window and I wouldn't go in but I'd, I'd stand outside and look at these jumpers. So Martin Kidman, if anybody wants to look that up. I don't, I don't know if there's much about Martin Kidman out there. I think there's a, a couple of books maybe that he published in the 80s um, and I'm sure if you Google it, you get some photograph of, uh, photographs of the stuff that he did. Um, really beautiful, amazing hand knits. Just great, you know. And he would have had knitters that, you know, just superb knitters. Um, so that's the real, where, where I started my interest in colour work. So I'd, I'd seen these Martin Kidman jumpers uh, in the window of Joseph and, and in magazines. And, and there was a particular jumper, uh, which was uh, a reindeer jumper. And I thought I would really like one of those. So I decided that I would try to knit one. So um, being short of funds, I went to a charity shop and uh, bought some needles and um, I'm not sure if I bought second-hand yarn um, but the yarn that I bought it was orange I bought orange and black acrylic um, and um, it was it was quite bright and I remember getting some lined paper and drawing squares so I draw the lines the other way um, to, to make some graph paper and filling in the squares uh, to make uh, this picture of a, a deer. And um, uh, I started knitting and it was atrocious. And the learning curve is massive, absolutely massive. But I had the time then, I, I was meant to be going to lectures, I was meant to be painting and um, I was wasting my time um, trying to learn to knit, which I did for, um, I, I put a serious amount of hours. I, I, don't, I don't suppose, because there's this 10,000 hours thing, isn't there? You know, if you put 10,000 hours into something, you become an expert. I would have said my 10,000 hours mark, I probably uh, reached that goal um, in the 90s, I would have said. So in the 80s, I'm, I'm still fumbling around, but I'm trying stuff. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to work out how it works. To begin with, you know, you've got to realise in those days, if you wanted to learn how to do colour work, you didn't have the internet. Um, the best you had was a book. Or no, what well, the best you could have was somebody that, that was teaching you. But um, I'm, a, I'm away at uni, so um, I don't know anybody at that skill level where I am. So I'm trying to work it out for myself. Um, 
So yes, these days it must be a lot easier if you're if you want to learn how to do to colour knitting, you just go on YouTube and learn. Um, I, I imagine though you've still got to put the time in, you've still got to persevere. It's not something that you can learn overnight, but you know as long as you're prepared to do that, I think you can. Um, so I will talk in future episodes about about um, where my knitting goes from there. Um, but if if we if we leave it here for now with me in the mid 80s um, just trying to knit um, look, huge loops on the back of everything that I'm doing the tensions rubbish there's holes in it there's drop stitches it's it's just atrocious but so if we leave it there and then in the next episode perhaps I'll uh, I'll look at where I where I take my knitting from that point So now we'll have the short clip of me in the car where I'm showing you how I carry my floats. Okay, so the thing I get asked the most is how do I do two color color work, stranded color work and not have any floats? Well, they are floats but they're just one stitch. So this is the method I use. So here we go, in actual fact, uh, I'm not gonna change color, color there. I'm gonna go right across the top so it's all one color, but I am going to show you. So I'm obviously knitting English. I'm not knitting continental. So how you do it in continental, I don't know, but this is how I would do it. So I'm going to, lift up the carrying color the green and I put it between the two needles there and then I'm going to knit the stitch and I've just trapped it behind there and then the next stitch I just knit so I put the needle through I lift the carrying color between the two needles I trap it and then I knit past it once again, nice and slowly, I put the needle where it's going and then between the two needles, I put the carrying colour, then I knit the stitch and then I knit past it. Once more, so I put the needle where it's going, put the yarn between the two needles trap the needle and then knit past it thank you so there you are now you have the keys to the kingdom um i hope that explains how i do it uh if you've got any questions um i'd be really interested um to to see any questions on on any of this you know what you like what you don't like put them in the comments down below and um you know if you don't like something we'll we'll try and lose it next time and if you do like certain aspects of of what i'm trying to do here it's you know we we're trying to do something but we don't necessarily have a major plan so if there's something that you that you'd like to see in these videos that would that would be great just put it in the comments below the more comments the better at this point so that's it for this time. I'd like to thank the Knitting Widow for all of her help. If you don't uh, already follow me on Instagram, I'm Gary Ray Smith. I think you might find the Knitting Man will find me too on Instagram. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, give me a follow. Um, and uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because um, it, it's what counts really. The, the more followers I get, the more likely, the more subscribers. It's free to subscribe and hit the bell as well. So next time I put up a, a video, um, it, it flags it up for you. Uh, the more subscribers I get, the more likely I am to, to do more videos. So if you don't like them, don't subscribe. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.